Hey, how's it going out there today, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. I am in uh, misery, as I like to call it. Uh, some people call it Missouri. Um, there's my sheet I was looking for. Yeah, so um, didn't get as far as I wanted to today. Um, just uh, wasn't feeling it, so I shut it down. I got about four hours left on this load I'm working on. Do a quick recap of the week here. Um, get this, uh, what I've been doing the last week. I haven't made a video since Monday, I think, last week. Uh, on a recap. So, I guess it's time to hurry up and get one done. And, uh, and then after that, I want to talk about some lease purchasing. Oh, yeah. It seems to be the way to be these days. Uh, for a short term, I guess. Uh, with Trucker's Coach doing it and dropping out. And, um... You know, I see a lot of other people on YouTube that, uh, you know, just months ago they were explaining how good of a deal it is. And then all of a sudden they're, um, they're not doing it anymore. Imagine that. Um, I can't say that I'm above them because I did it before. Uh, I did a lease purchase with Western Express for three weeks. Not really three weeks, 19 days. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I should have never, I should have never signed up for that, but I did. I re quickly realized I had made a mistake. I uh, probably should have left an orientation. It was that bad, but I didn't. I said, uh, and that 19 days was counting the four days of orientation. So actually, when I got the truck and got on the road, uh, I think it was about 14 days I was on the road with them. Could not get that truck back to those guys soon enough. Um, yeah, but we're in we're in misery now. Uh, some people call it Missouri. I call it misery. Beautiful day today. I was in Iowa uh, most of the day. It was like 60 degrees and sunny, uh, but I think it's supposed to snow. So we were enjoying it while we could. I put on my short sleeves. Oh yeah. Um, but let's talk about what I did this week. So I was in Detroit last time I made a video. Finally got out of there. Boy, I had a rough week, but I have recovered uh, this weekend. Um, so I sat in Detroit pretty much an entire day. Trying to find something worth pulling. Grabbed a load that wasn't even supposed to deliver but for a couple days. Only going to Chicago. But luckily, uh, I dropped it on the yard in Chicago. They let me drop it there. Went and picked it up. That was a really good load. It weighed about 5,000 pounds, and it was five pallets. Picked that up, dropped it on the yard in Chicago, dropped down into Illinois, into rural Illinois, and grabbed a load going back to the yard in Minnesota. Another one that had a couple days extra on it. Um, that is kind of one thing that I look for whenever I'm looking for loads here, because... If it's going to Minnesota or it's going to Chicago, we have drop yards. And uh, the Chicago one, sometimes I have to pay a little bit to get somebody else to deliver that for me. But the Minnesota ones, I do not because the local guys do that on the company's dime. So, um, ran that load up to Minnesota. And typically when loads have like extra time on them, they pay better. So that's kind of one of those little inside things I look for is loads going to Minnesota that have too much time on them because it doesn't hurt me because I don't have to sit on it. But I get paid that extra for the sitting on it. Just one angle I've figured out here. I don't know. Works for me. If you got that option, uh, maybe look into that. Uh, so we came out of the yard in Minnesota on a preloaded trailer back down to Illinois, rural Illinois, almost the same spot I just came up from, um, and the load back up to Minnesota was about 30,000 pounds, this load going back down to rural Illinois weighed 2,800 pounds, um, uh, I've done stellar on mileage this week, I've ran, uh, not only did I get really good mileage, I'm getting fuel at, like, really cheap, I think this is the first week I've ever, uh, since, you know, being here, this is the first week I have ran over 3,000 miles and spent less than $1,000 on fuel. Um, 
it's it's quite good it's quite profitable um, talk to you a little bit more about profits in a minute stick with me I, I'll get through this real quick so then um, out of rural Illinois we went up to Wisconsin for a load coming back to the yard that was customer freight um, it had a little bit more deadhead on it than what I wanted but um, when I got back to the yard, I had a preloaded trailer there waiting on me coming to uh, uh, Iowa for today. And then out of that distribution center that I was delivering to, I had a load coming out of there going to Missouri. So I didn't complain too much about, like, the Wisconsin load was uh, 380 miles with an 84-mile deadhead on it. So it's not a ridiculous amount of uh, deadhead, but it's a little bit more than I want. But... They gave it to me, all three loads stacked together. So it ended up being um, almost 1,100 miles with 80, with only the only load that had deadhead was that one. So it ended up being 1,000 miles with 84 miles of deadhead on it. That's more like it. So I didn't complain. I didn't ask for more because they had stacked all three loads together. Basically, I went from rural Illinois up to Wisconsin. From Wisconsin back to Minneapolis, Minneapolis down to Iowa, Iowa over to Missouri, you know, and from Minnesota to Iowa, no deadhead, uh, Iowa to Missouri, no deadhead, so uh, I did really good on deadhead this week, actually. Um, the load I pulled out of Detroit was uh, 440 miles with a 16 mile deadhead on that one. Um... And the load into Detroit was 552 miles with 59 miles of deadhead. Um, so yeah, I had one here that was 409 miles with an 84 mile deadhead on it. Total miles for the week, 3,092 miles. Let me tell you, I got a day of layover pay in there too. That's how crappy my, um, my week started out. But, you know... I had hours to run because I'd sit around so much uh, at the beginning of the week that, uh, yeah, I turned it on this weekend, cranked out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loads this week. Um, none of them, none of them long loads. All of them uh, in the three to my longest was, you know, 600 miles, including deadhead, and my shortest was. 330 uh, with no deadhead so cranked out some miles this week made some good money like I said spent less than a thousand dollars on fuel this week um, total fuel with death uh, I guess when I say a thousand I mean diesel but I spent one thousand and three dollars including death um, now that may change. I want to talk to you guys about that. I've been looking at some trucks. Uh, talked to Peterbilt about this lease thing I got going here with uh, this truck. You know, I told them that this transmission is absolutely driving me crazy. It's it's like one of those things. You know, the more I drive it, the more I notice it. And you know, it's like one of those things you just can't overcome it. Um, you know, like like today, I'm sitting, getting ready to pull out of a truck stop, and there's no red light, two-lane road, not a whole lot of traffic on this two-lane road. Um, but yeah, go to pull out, I push the accelerator down. I've got now where I count it just to see the new record, you know. Like the average is about four Mississippi. You press on the accelerator, you count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, then the truck starts to accelerate. So, I told them, like, I can't, you know, this is dangerous. <laughs> like, and uh, so I went to truck dealership in uh, Minneapolis Friday, uh, looked at a few trucks, um, you know, a couple that had just came in on trade, uh, I like one of them more than I like uh, the other one. 
it is the my actually my top pick right now is a Cascadia. You know, I gave it. I'm, I'm so like weary of Cascadia because of my last truck. But then again, I've had really good luck with them in the past. So could have just been a lemon I got. I don't know. I'm debating it. Uh, they got a couple Kenworths where I went. Uh, T680s. They got this same transmission engine setup as this has got. So I'm like, I, I just, I'm not willing to do it again. You know, matter of fact, I'm willing to pay. Right now where I'm at, it's going to cost me about $3,300 to cancel the lease on this truck. Um, the salesman where, I, where I'm doing business is willing to you know try to work with me on that uh he understands that you know i you can't understand a truck by the test drive you know what i mean like until you start working with it every day you start running it thousands of miles um you know you, you don't know if you're gonna like it or dislike it i mean i've had it for five months now um you know the end of this month will be, uh, you know, the end of this month will be right at the six month mark, which brings that, you know, down on, you know, what I have to pay to, uh, turn this back in. Really thinking hard about it right now. Um, found a 2016 Cascadia for like, uh, you know, $42,000. Um, still has warranty on it. It's in about the, you know, the low 400s on miles. I don't know. Um, definitely something to think about right now. Um, because this truck is killing me with this transmission. They have it, like I said, the T680. I actually looked at it more than any of them because, um, you know, as far as like, I looked at their inventory online and whatnot. But. Uh, they had it listed as a 10 speed and then when I got there I got to looking at it it's a 10 speed 10 speed auto shift it's got the same transmission as this truck's got and I'm like that rules that one directly out that one's not even considered anymore so I don't know um, I'm debating on what to do right now um, you know, my other Cascadia was, uh, uh, two, my last Cascadia was a 2013. This one's a 2016, so I'm hoping that, um, you know, maybe less trouble out of that one. It does come with some warranty, so I won't be footing the huge bill if it is. I uh, have some problems right off the bat. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's up in the air right now. Got to think about it. But, <laughs> the thing I said about lease purchase earlier is I actually was talking to a guy earlier um, when I was doing a drop and hook. He was doing a drop and hook. And, uh, you know, he was talking about his company didn't pay very good, this, that, and the other. And he said uh, he was thinking about doing a lease purchase at Hirschbach. And, of course, we're in Iowa. They're everywhere, you know. Uh, there's a Hirschbach parked over here where I'm at right now. Um, you know, they're, they're heavy in this area, so I don't know, maybe he was thinking, you know, he sees a lot of them, so they must be making great money if there's so many of them out there, right? Um, I don't know. I did some research. I did a little research on some lease purchases. I thought people might get a kick out of this. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see that. I don't even know why I held it up. I did some research on lease purchases. Now, given I didn't do a lot of research because I don't care that much about them, but I do want to shine some light on some of these numbers because I know you owner operators and company guys out there will get a kick out of this. If you're in one of these lease purchases, you may not get so much of a kick out of this because you are getting taken advantage of. I love shining light on how bad of an idea a lease purchase is. Purchasing a truck from a company that's going to give you the freight and the money is a horrible idea if you're considering it please reconsider it so um this guy was telling me earlier uh he said he had talked to hirschbach and they had told him that 
you average twelve hundred to fourteen hundred dollars a week after everything's paid for. My first question to him was, is that after you play, pay self-employment tax? You know, because I know you got to pay your regular tax on that twelve to fourteen hundred. I mean, you work anywhere, you pay it. But if you're a lease purchase guy, does that count your self-employment tax? I don't think so. Do they, is that count uh, after workman's comp? Is that paid time off? You know, like here where I'm at, uh, well, I mean, anywhere I'm at as an owner-operator, I put back about $65 a week for uh, paid time off. And that gives me, like, ballpark, like, thirty-two to $3,400 a year for paid time off. Um, so, you know, I have to calculate that in when I do my pay, you know, I need about an extra 65 bucks a week for paid time off because I like to take time off, but yet I still like to be paid for that time off. So I pay myself, um, you know, like if I take a week of vacation, I'm still going to pay myself, you know, 1500 bucks to be off that week. I'm still going to pay myself on, a, if I take off for a holiday, I'm still going to make two to 250 bucks for that day. Uh, because I am an employee of my company and not the company I'm leased to, my personal business. Um, I treat myself as an employee. I get paid time off. I get a salary. It's the only way to do it. If not, you know, like, go work for, you know, Bob's Trucking or something. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not going to excel as an owner-operator, uh, don't do it. I'm just telling you right now, it ain't worth it. I've, I've ran the numbers. <laughs> if you can't excel, then it's pointless. So let me give you a few. These are just a few. Just a few I looked up really quick. Number one, Hirsch Box, since we're talking about them. You can't find nothing on their website, as most of these. You have to dig for it, about company or owner-operator pay over there. Like, there is no resources on their website they tell you everything. The company history. They tell you you can get fuel for 99 cents a gallon, which that's a rip off at Hirschbach. If you're getting more than seven and a half miles a gallon, they're taking advantage of you with that 99 cent crap. Because they take your fuel for, fuel surcharge if, if you do that. So I always thought that was crap. Um, I mean, they tell you everything on this website. They tell you how much your truck payment's going to be. They tell you how much blah, blah, blah is going to be. They tell you all this. As most of these lease purchases do, they don't tell you a darn thing about how much you're going to make. It's like, a preposterous to me. That's the first question. I don't care what your truck payment is. I don't care what kind of truck you got. I don't care what year the company was founded. I don't give two rats asses about the guy that started the company. All I need to know right up front, how much you going to pay me? How much per mile or how much are your loads and what percentage am I getting of it? I don't need to know all this other crap, all this heartwarming. We're a team. We're a family. You know what you can do with that? As The Rock used to say, you can turn it sideways and stick it straight up your candy ass. That's the way I look at it. Pardon my French, but that's how I look at it. I, I don't need to know all this other stuff. So Hirschbach, uh, they tell you everything but what the pay is. I have no idea what the pay over there is. I'm going to assume it's pretty garbage if they don't put it out there. Um, let's go to another one. I looked up U.S. Express. This is per their website. They pay $1 to $2 per mile. Oh, isn't that great? I love basing my business decisions off of vague comments uh you know there's a big difference between operating a truck for a dollar a mile and operating a truck for two dollars a mile so uh just on that western express no bueno um let's go my my personal favorite my personal favorite trans am oh boys wait till you get a load of this uh, Trans Am, you know, refrigerated company, so you got all this wait time, you got all this uh, heavy heavy meat loads. Um, yeah, they're breaking it off for 84 cents a mile. Um, can you believe that in 2020, they expect you to operate a truck for 84 cents a mile? I mean... 
whoa, whoa, like, um, you know, I feel like the truck went 88 miles an hour and I went back to the future. I mean, what is this, 1985? 84 cents a mile. Trans Am. Oh, but they say they'll, you'll, they, you'll get 28 to 3,100 miles a week. I'm like, hell yeah, you'd get that kind of miles. If I was running a show, if I had my own authority again, and I could find somebody to lease on for 84 cents a mile, I would run them to death. I mean, technically I wouldn't because I wouldn't want to do somebody like that. But if you signed up for 84 cents a mile, whoo, yeah, you're that guy. Uh, next, my old Nemesis USA truck. I used to, I started there. That was the company I started with. That's why I say that. Uh, USA truck. Oh, man, you can get 65% or 67% of some crappy rate I'm sure they're pulling. Uh, you even get to pick the all, you get to pick the crap rate you get. Because they got a load board over there. But, anyway, I, I'm just going by the, um, I'm just going by the per mile pay. Because this percentage pay these companies show is so vague they will not give you any idea of the rate. I mean, like U.S. Express, one to two dollars a mile. So anyway, USA Truck, up to, up to a dollar eight a mile. And I'm sure that's some sort of sliding scale where it's like a 50 mile run uh, for a dollar eight a mile. Empty miles, empty miles, I love it. I love when there's a difference between empty miles and loaded miles. That really lets you know you're dealing with a quality carrier. Uh, 94 cents an empty mile over there at USA Truck. 25 cent fuel surcharge going right now. Um, they're one of the few companies that puts a lot of information out there. I give them that at least. Uh, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's what you're getting. At best, you can expect a dollar thirty-three loaded, and uh, what is that? Ninety-nine dollar nineteen empty. That's your top. That's your top. Whoo, man! Oh man! Dart. Let's talk dart for a minute. Drive like a boss. Um, <laughs> I love those signs. Drive like a boss. I'm from Minneapolis, so Dart's everywhere there. Uh, Dart calls me all the time. I don't know how Dart got my number. Lose it, Dart. Please, I don't want to drive like a boss. Um, they, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't care to drive like a boss. I love the Dart commercial that runs on my YouTube all the time where the guy goes, it's all about the miles. And I'm thinking, God, I wish I could hire guys like that that thought that way. Pay them about a dime a mile and run them about 4,000 miles a week and make an absolute killing. And hey, it's all about the miles. He's getting 4,000 miles a week. You ought to be happy. Um, I don't know. I'd probably have to spend millions on recruiting like Dart does to get people to sign up for that crap. So let's talk some numbers at Dart. Dart. 65% of the rate again. Here's another one of these vague percentage ones. I hate these. 65% of the load are the line haul. And we won't tell you nowhere near what the rate is because we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to disclose information like that. You know, that's a trade secret, I'm sure. Um also known as bull crap. Um I don't know. It says make hundred and seventy six thousand dollars a year. I'm just thinking, like, you know, there's company drivers that get close to that. You know, like, you take some of these UPS and, uh, you know, these guys that have these feeder job positions with FedEx and Old Dominion and, you know, like, some of those guys are well over a hundred grand. And I'm like, at Dart, you're making 176 as an owner operator? Uh, let's do some quick math on that in my head. What is that, like, 3,500 bucks a week? Huh, 3500 bucks a week as an owner-operator. Doesn't seem like enough, just saying. I mean, I have bad weeks, I run that sometimes, but I just don't see how you do it every week. So, past the percentage thing of Dart, uh, I did seem to find and add an, 
uh, buried way, way, way down. Because like I said, none of these guys want you to find their rates they pay. They want to tell you everything but the rate they pay. So, Dart, uh, it appears that if you go 48 state over the road, you're going to get 90 to 93 cents a mile. Empty and loaded. Pays the same crap rate empty and loaded. Aren't you, aren't you just jealous of that? Like, you could be over there at USA Truck and getting, you know, paid one rate for loaded, one rate for empty. No, no, no. Over here, they pay the same crappy rate for both. Uh, they say they pay a fuel surcharge. Does not say anything about how much it is, uh, how they calculate it. None of that. I'm sure it's all in the contract, and you um, you ain't gonna know nothing about it. That's what it is. You ain't gonna know nothing about it till you get there and you sign up because they're gonna BS you the whole way. Um, the thing I like about Dart. Here's what I like about Dart. If you live in the South, 87 cents a mile. Yeah, let that sink in for a minute. Um, here we go. My old lease purchase, Western Express. So they pay a dollar ten a mile, and and I, I tried to look on van rates for everything, but Western Express is very vague, and I think these are the flatbed rates, not the dry van rates. But a dollar ten a mile for loads like your average load. Now they do have a sliding scale that pays up to 250 a mile. Woo, that's killer, ain't it? No, that's for zero to 99 miles. So if you run a 99 mile load, you get 250 bucks for it. Doesn't seem right to me. Uh, they only pay fuel surcharge on loaded miles. So that's another one of those um, tricky scams they pull you know like because you don't burn fuel on empty miles we all know that as truckers when you're running empty you don't burn any fuel zero fuel burned so you're good to go uh pam transport you can't find nothing man i think they got guys scouring the internet right now as we speak deleting deleting pages sending cease and desist pages on what they pay. I couldn't find nothing on Pound Transport's pay. Uh, I see, I mean, you go to their website, they tell you the damn company history in detail. They tell you the specs of the trucks in detail. They tell you everything. But they don't dare tell you what they pay per mile. Schneider. Let's go to Schneike. Up to $235,000 a year. 65% pick it off a load board, but we don't talk about rates at Schneider apparently because I can't figure out how much you get if you do the mileage pay and uh, they don't tell you what those loads pay on that load board. So, you know, buyer beware. Now, Schneider will finance anybody a truck. You need two things to finance a truck at Schneider. You need number one, a CDL. Number two, you need to be able to fog a mirror. If you have a CDL and you can hold a mirror under your nose and breathe and it fogs up, you're good. Solid. A pulse. You know, I think if you can't fog a mirror, at least if you have a pulse, they will finance you. So please, by all means, run over there. Grab you up one of those. Watch the guy on YouTube the other day. Took his Schneider Finance truck to uh, Landstar. Didn't, did not work out well good, or did not work out well for him. Um, I believe he said his truck payment with insurance was $4,000 a month. I'm sorry, guys. Like, you're not going to overcome a payment like that. I don't care, you know, like, unless you're pulling, unless you got, like, some dedicated oversized freight, you're never going to overcome a $4,000 payment. You're just not. Um, it's going to wear on you. Like you might get it for six months, but you know, it's like, it's like a good, uh, boxer that's got good footwork and good movement. You know, like you can swing for the fences and you may hang with him for a few rounds, but eventually he's going to tire you out and he's going to win. And that's, that's Schneider finance right there. That's an analogy for you. 
But anyway, guys, this is a long-ass video. I've been ranting. I appreciate everybody sticking around. If you stuck around this uh, long, give yourself a pat on the back because you are a true warrior and champion. Uh, leave me some comments. I don't know. I'm tired. I'm ranting. Uh, but anyway, later, guys. Take care of each other out there. I appreciate it. Comment, 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 comment. Leave me comments.